Well, as Ty mentioned, this is the first Sunday of Advent, and it has become our tradition at Christ Church to recite the definition of Chalcedon in place of the Apostles' Creed when we get to our corporate confession in the liturgy. Um, and since this is a creed that we are less familiar with, and it's kind of a complicated uh, creed, um, I thought I'd make a few introductory comments on it. Uh, so if, you're, if you have your bulletin and you're looking on the right side, you'll see Confession of Faith, Definition of Chalcedon. So I'm going to kind of just intro you uh, to that. A little historical background. Uh, the definition of Chalcedon was adopted in five, uh, 451 A.D., in Asia Minor, which is modern-day Turkey. Um, And this creed was a response to a number of Christological errors concerning the nature or natures of Christ. How can an infinite God take on human flesh? How can Jesus be both God and man? And this is the highest, it is the highest point of theological mystery and reflection, and it is also the place at which heresies haunt us around every corner. And so what the definition of Chalcedon did was uh, put up guardrails to prevent Christians from falling into uh, Nestorianism on one side or Eutychianism on the other. Now, what exactly are those two heresies, Nestorianism and Eutychianism? In the simplest of terms, Nestorianism is the belief that there are two persons in Christ. There's two persons in Christ. Whereas Eutychianism is the belief that there is only one nature in Christ. These are both wrong. Christ is one person, not two. And there are two natures in that one Christ, a human nature and a divine nature. And as we will recite shortly, those two natures are without confusion, without change, without division, without separation, the distinction of natures being in no way annulled by the union, but rather the characteristics of each nature being preserved and coming together to form one person. So that section right there, those are the guardrails to help keep you orthodox. And this is crucial for understanding who Jesus is and how it is even possible for us to be saved. Gregory of Nazianzus famously said that what is not assumed is not healed, meaning that if Christ has no human nature, if he's not truly fully human, then no human, me or you, we cannot be redeemed. And if Christ has no divine nature, if he is mere man, well then how could he endure the holy wrath of God? In order for Christ to be a mediator for us, he has to have both our human nature and the divine nature in his singular person. And that is what the definition of Chalcedon sets forth and protects.